with the private beta release of Full Self Driving 2.0 less than 48 hours ago as I record this, and with a public beta slated before the end of the year, a lot of talk about this technology from Tesla has recently shown up on many media outlets. Unfortunately, many of these reports are inaccurate, or they gloss over some of the most impressive aspects of Full Self Driving 2.0. As I have a background in machine learning, I thought it would be good to try to set things straight here and explain why FSD 2.0 is, potentially at least, such a big deal. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. This channel is dedicated to finding out whether I really do know it all or not. If you enjoy the video, please do hit the like button so other people can find it, and definitely subscribe if you want to see more of these. From the videos that have already started to crop up online, <laughs> I'm not sure if they're supposed to be there or not, but anyway, from the ones that have already started to show up online, it certainly looks like FSD 2.0 is living up to most of what Elon Musk has said in his tweets this year. It looks like it's a substantial increase over FSD 1.0. Of note, a team of around 300 AI software engineers has been really hard at work on this project under the leadership of Andre Karpathy. So let's just go ahead and start with what do you get out of Full Self Driving 2.0? Well, first of all, you get the ability to make turns on city streets. That's nice. You also get the ability to do roundabouts, which is cool. Supposedly, there's an ability to avoid potholes, so that causes less damage for the car. That's nice. Uh, you also get better performance on the highway, so passing, staying in lanes, etc. And you get better performance at stop signs, red lights, etc. And there's also a path here toward complete level 4 autonomy. If you don't know what that is, I've done a bunch of other videos on levels of autonomy and so forth. So just check those out if you want to. Um, so it's a hardware-software combination anyway that will allow it to pretty much drive on its own everywhere. So that's the quick recap, but how does full self-driving do this? First of all, this is an entirely new rewrite of the software. Version 1.x was, as Elon Musk said, stuck at local maxima. Uh, that means it kept getting close to the correct answer, but it couldn't ever quite get over the hump. So you've got a, a, a local maximum, right? But then what you want to get is up here, you want to get to the global maximum. And it was never able to do that just because of the nature of the beast. It's a very, very complicated problem and they thought they had solved it and they thought they were going to be able to reach the global maximum with version 1.x but they never were able to some of the reasons why this occurred number one data acquisition was difficult um not the acquisition itself but the figuring out of how to deal with the acquisition and also dealing with the fact that there's multiple cameras and lidar and not lidar oh goodness gracious <laughs> radar and sonar not lidar uh but also you know they had difficulty with data labeling and especially they had difficulty with data continuity what does full self-driving 2 bring it brings data from all eight cameras collected into one picture rather than multiple independent items. Combined with radar and sonar information, this becomes a huge thing, right? This is a massive amount of data that has to be processed, compressed into an image or video, actually, and then fed into the onboard computers on a Tesla. That's, that's a huge amount of work, and it's really amazing that they're able to do that with the stuff that's on board on a, on a car. But what you get out of that is a complete picture of what's going on all the time. There is also data labeling. As Elon Musk spoke about at the Investor Day, data is now la labeled in a 4D space rather than about a 2.5D space in version 1.X. What that means is that they're actually labeling it not in just three dimensions around them, right, X, Y, Z, but they're also labeling it in time. And that is the crucial differentiator between version one and version two. Although, honestly, the putting it the eight different videos together into one video is actually pretty huge also. So the result of this is you get far better training. Interestingly enough, they've also got another project going on. It is not complete yet, but it's called Dojo. It's a back end. It's supposed to be one of the fastest, if not the fastest, supercomputers on the planet when it gets done sometime middle of next year-ish. So that'd be 2021. But it's a neural network training center, and it's specifically being designed to help them improve full self-driving very, very rapidly. This new system is supposed to work at an exaflop or more, which is it's just a really big number. <laughs> it's a lot of calculations per second, basically. And what Dojo will allow them to do is unsupervised labeling and training of video sequences. Currently, what has to happen, and this is, you know, most AI, not just Tesla, is that they actually have to have human beings interact with the data and label things. It is massively inefficient. Human beings are very, very slow at doing this. If your computer can do it, 
much, much better. But traditionally, computers have not been able to do this because there haven't been algorithms to do it. So one of the huge breakthroughs is this uh, autonomous or unsupervised learning ability to label data on its own. Dojo is also going to curate the edge cases, which means that bad results as soon as a driver has to take over, right? So the thing's about to crash into a railing, go off the thing, go off the road, go into a car, whatever that would be. Uh, under any of those circumstances where the human has to take over again, it will automatically curate those and it will put those into the pipeline and it will train on those extra hard so that it learns those particular edge cases. This is a form of bootstrap learning, of course, which means you learn and then you figure out what's wrong and you train harder on those particular things that you got wrong. And then you keep upping the ante, uh, which is a very effective way of doing machine learning. The results of this, of course, will be pushed out to full self-driving 2.0 or 2.x owners over time. And this should massively, massively improve full self-driving as training processes huge amounts of data from the drivers much more efficiently than it can now. What this means is that full self-driving is going to be much better in about 12 months than it is now, and it's going to improve really, really quickly over time after that as Dojo comes online and becomes a really effective training tool. One thing I've seen online that is definitely wrong is that people are saying it's going to require new hardware in the cars themselves. That is not true. Dojo is actually something that works on the back end, right? So <laughs> it's a massive supercomputer that takes up a whole building or something, but that doesn't mean that the cars themselves have to have better abilities or anything like that. They have all the hardware they need within the cars. The training happens offsite and then it gets pumped back to the full self-driving owners. Andre Carpathy, who is the Tesla AI lead person, described their goal as vacation mode, which basically means if the team decides to go on vacation all at the same time, uh, that the AI will continue to learn on its own and get better and better. What it can do now, though, is more or less feature complete. And the most important thing is data inference and continuity. The better data inference effectively means that it's able to see things better and know what they are. And the continuity means that it's able to attach that over time. So before it might learn in one picture that that's a stop sign, but it doesn't know in the next picture, which happens a 30th of a second later or something like that, that that's still a stop sign. So it still has to learn that all over again. The continuity, again, like I said, is the massively new feature. It is able to say stop sign, stop sign, stop sign, stop sign, stop sign throughout an entire video sequence, rather than having to kind of relearn that or relabel that with every single picture it takes. That's the gigantic sort of quantum leap that Full Self Driving 2 is taking. Of course, with continuity comes far better driving ability, which should be able to rival or exceed human driving capability. And that, of course, is the goal because then you can turn the driving over to the computer and people can do whatever the heck they want to in the car. Of course, Tesla's full self-driving 2.0 could still prove to be too brittle or it could still just reach a local rather than a global maximum. But Musk is he seems pretty awfully sure of himself this time. And as I've pointed out in other articles, particularly why you can't buy back your leased Tesla, I think they're really, really confident that they are going to have this working very, very soon. And of course, the price jump, which is going to happen in just a few days from when I'm recording this up from $8,000 for full self-driving to $10,000, which sucks. <laughs> I just wish I could get on board fast enough. Need more money. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it's evident that they really do think that this is a major jump ahead, because if they didn't, they wouldn't be raising the price so much. So let's take a look at a few of the earliest videos that have popped out. I will give credit where they are due, of course. These are other people who are driving them. Like I said, I'm <laughs> I'm an unfortunate, I feel like I'm in the 1980s, back when all my friends had a computer and my parents did not have the financial wherewithal to buy one. So I was always like, ah, oh. <laughs> I'm back in that unfortunate situation now where I'm like, I really wish I had the money to buy one of these so I could play with the new toys, but oh well. Anyway, so let's look at other people's videos and I'll kind of walk through what I see in them. So here we have a video by Tesla owners SV. Um, you'll notice it's at night, which is pretty freaking cool. <laughs> Talk about difficult, man. They just immediately started on these night vision things. Uh, here's a left-hand turn that's being made. If you notice, it's following a car here, but it, on the left-hand screen, you can see like a really cool like 1980s looking, <laughs> kind of looks like Pac-Man or something, right? But anyway, when the light changes, you notice as soon as the car in front of it goes, right? You can see the speedometer going up and it executes a left-hand turn like no problem at all. Pretty fantastic. So here's a fun one. Again, this is Tesla owner's SV for credit. Again, it's at night. Notice this is a roundabout, and uh, <laughs> you see it was rather timid at the start of the whole thing, but it does execute the roundabout and continue on going. So super cool. 
So here's a video from Brandon E916. You can see there's a car in front of the one. I love how adorable it is that it, the Tesla has its little lights on. <laughs> so you know it's nighttime as if the black road didn't give you evidence of that. But it's following along at a pretty reasonable speed. It goes right through the intersection. You can see it shows that there's a green light there. Uh, also, you can see some cars along the side, which is pretty cool. And then there's, uh, I think right here, uh, coming up, right there, there's and finally, here's another one from Tesla owners SV. Uh, you can see he puts it into full self-driving mode and then they're gonna test it out with somebody walking out in front of it, not in a crosswalk. So he goes, he proceeds through the stop sign as appropriate. And then you can see his buddy walks out right in front of him and watch the car just slows down, stops, chills out. <laughs> you can see there's a little guy on the screen. It's kind of walking across. And as soon as the guy's gone, it just accelerates back up again. So that is really fantastic in terms of safety. Super, super cool. So this stuff is amazing, right? Just looking at it, looking at the sort of Pac-Man-like interface where it's got the little dots that it's showing up. I kind of love the beta unpolished interface. I think that's even cooler than the polished interface, honestly. You get to see more details about what's actually happening behind the hood. So why is this different than Waymo in Arizona and GM in San Francisco, both of which just got granted FSD licenses? Those systems use LiDAR, which, like I said earlier in the thing, <laughs> Tesla does not use LiDAR. It's very expensive. It's very brittle. They have to map out the entire area that the cars are driving in, and it can't change very much or else the whole system breaks. So that's not really a full level five or level four autonomy because the goal of that is to be flexible enough to be global not to be limited to a couple of square kilometers or miles or something like that, right? So it's a different thing. It's, it's still super impressive that they're able to do this, but it's a much smaller task and they're kind of stuck at a local maximum and it's gonna be super hard for them to scale this out to larger areas. So with FSD 2.0, Tesla should soon be able to compete with Waymo and GM on that level, but they'll be able to kind of do it anywhere where they've never mapped the, the area out and where they don't know it so well. So they'll be able to scale up super rapidly as soon as they are able to make this full self-driving work perfectly or very close to perfectly. Plus, and here's a really interesting aspect, you can actually own one of these cars, right? You can't own a Waymo or one of these GM taxis. You can actually purchase a Tesla and have this as your own car and it does this driving stuff itself. That's super cool, right? And hopefully eventually if the robo taxi fleets come out, you'll be able to make money off of that as well, which means that the car goes from an expense to an asset, which is really great. So in general, Tesla's full self-driving 2 is a complete generalized solution that the average consumer can own, and that's pretty cool. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, definitely make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more of this. And please also ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.